Today's episode is a really powerful story of hope and healing. It starts with Freddie Kimmel, whose life exploded when a series of chronic illnesses swept through him at a young age. And when so many people would just give up, instead, Freddie went all in, into a world of alternative therapies and healing that totally transformed his health and the entire trajectory of his life. Now he guides others in their, what do I do now, healing journey after a diagnosis or simply when you recognize that your body is calling out for you and calling out for your help. Freddie and I talk about how to begin your healing journey and what you can expect along the way as you heal in every area, emotionally, energetically, mentally, spiritually, and physically. Stay with me. Flow dreaming, still kinda woo-woo, is just what it sounds like. An escape into the world of woo, also a ride into you and how to feel happier, wiser, and more self-aware in every way. It's your ultimate journey into personal growth and inner power. We'll explore ideas like how your energy self influences the kinds of opportunities you encounter, or how your personal growth can drive your business growth, or even how that feeling of being stuck is really always coming from something else. We just have to figure out what? That's right. We're a dash of woo-woo, a sprinkle of self-care, a heap of problem-solving and pattern-busting, and a giant cup of encouragement. We're going to relight so much passion, purpose, self-love, and confidence in you that you practically stagger. I'm Summer McStravick, your host, and welcome to Flow Dreaming. Still kind of woo-woo. Freddie, I am so delighted to introduce my whole audience to your perspective on health and healing. And I want to reiterate one more time before we jump in that our goal in today's episode is if you have a chronic illness, if you have any illness, if you if you love somebody with an illness, if you're caretaking somebody with an illness and you sometimes wonder, why don't you just get over it? Or, oh, this is so hard. I want to take all that energy off it and and create a different relationship, knowing that this is part of you and your life, and you may very well heal from it. They may heal from it. How can we do that? And or how can we make peace and and love who we are, no matter what our body is doing or, or saying to us? So we're going to talk about healing energetically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, as well as physically. And I have the most fabulous guests here to help with that. Freddie Kimmel, take it away. Introduce yourself. Hi, it's such an honor to be here. My name is Freddie Kimmel. I am a, who am I? That's the big question. I love that question. Who am I? Because we could go like 18, 18 levels down. Yeah, I am I am a human being. So what I spend my life today committing to help um, people find the inspiration, um, the empowerment, and the education to radically take ownership of their health and their story. And whether that's on the biochemical level and chemistry and blood chemistry and lymphatics, or it's that mental, emotional, spiritual, where is the rock of your heart? Where is, where is your true north compass? And that can encapsulate anything. And, and the big thing I always, I love to offer is it's, it's the energy behind the action. Mm-hmm. It's how we, how, we, how we touch someone when we hug. That's how we open the door to the refrigerator. It's the love we put into the food on the stove. It's everything. So we always have these opportunities to just be expressing our most beautiful peak performance in, in the little simple things. And they add up into, you know, they add up into a life that is just, it's beautiful and it's worth something. Mm-hmm. So mm. I'll start mm. there. Yeah, good. Okay, well, I'm going to throw some, throw some, um, I was going to say softballs at you, but I, I ran across you because I noticed that we're both cancer survivors and you've also been through a lot of other things. I also have another chronic illness. It sounds like you, I mean, I know you have a lot or have had a lot. I don't know what state you are in your, your journey, but 
I know for me that the many times I've been faced with my health absolutely going down, or sometimes I call it my body betraying me. And I feel like my body betrayed me. And then I realize, oh my God, I haven't been listening to my body. I mean, because that's what happens, right? If you're not listening to your partner, something's going to happen. So then I have to go through a big, long process of rebuilding my relationship to it. Can you tell me about your relationship to your body and the things that is that have happened to it? And then also like, you know, how you've learned to bridge that and heal it and help it? Of course. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I would say that um, if we were to look back, I started out as a very young human being, 23 years old, uh, woke up one day with like full body rheumatoid arthritis, which at 23, I just sort of ate Advil, which progressed to indomethacin, which progressed to Plaquenil, um, different immune modifiers just to suppress the pain. Mm -hmm. And I really wasn't interested in being sick or mm -hmm. going to the doctor. You know, I just well, wanted to do what I needed to do to show up and and follow my dream, which at the time I was, I was pursuing uh, Broadway in, in New York city. I was a Broadway performer and I was wow. going, going very well. You know, yeah. um, I was one of those kids who, you know, you hear the story where you set down your bags and it'll be years before you work. I booked my first Broadway tour right off the bus. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I know, Woo. I know. And so, you know, I didn't have time to be sick. Nah. Um, yeah. Cut to three or four years later, I had eventually had this pain in my uh, left testicle, which started to move to my belly. And I wound up in an emergency room mm -hmm. with advanced testicular cancer, which had spread to nine lymph nodes in my abdomen. Yeah. There was a tumor wrapped around my vena cava, cutting off blood supply to my heart. Ugh. It was one wrapped around my left kidney. And so life just took this incredible, incredible left turn. You know, I had to, I had to, I had to step away. I was like, he, my dreams are happening. You're telling me now I have cancer. Um, and then, and then, and then progressing to, oh, this cancer has metastasized to your, to your organs. You could, you could definitely die. Mm -hmm. So I had to uh, set down what I was, you know, I had to sit down music theater and acting and singing and dancing. And I had to, I had to apply the same veracity that I did there at, at beating cancer. And I did. And mm -hmm. I tell people, you know, this is where I, I imagine I'm like, I'm going to go back to New York. I'll get another Broadway show. Oprah's going to have me on because what a great story. And it, it wasn't that way. You know, I started going to the emergency room with these terrible bouts of uh, abdominal adhesions where my intestine would twist from scar tissue and I'd be rushed to the emergency room and they'd cut out a foot of small bowel. Yeah. That happened from 2007 to 2015. Mm -hmm. So I almost lived on this wheel of life and death, very extreme. Yeah. And in the middle, the immune system crashed. I had systemic Lyme disease, which I had to take a systemic. It's a whole body affair. Uh -huh. I had to take antibiotic for three years, which really didn't do a lot. You know, I had, I had bought a home. I'd managed to get into a home. It was filled with black mold. <laughs> <laughs> so there was, it, it, you know, everything that happened, it was this perfect storm. And it really, because uh, when you're that ill, when you're that sick, people do not know what to do with you. Oh, yeah, I know. You know, and so like you said at the beginning mm -hmm. of the podcast, from from day one, I was, I didn't, I didn't have a conversation with my body. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it would, meant. What is it? What do you mean listening to your body? What do you even mean? <laughs> that might not be a shared reality we all, we all land on. So. Uh, I, I learned. I started to learn and really become intuitive and ask better questions about my health. What What is robust health? You know, you said, well, how did you get out of this thing? Mm -hmm. You know, the body is uh, so much like a fish tank. It's so much like a fish tank. And I love this example because if you took a beautiful fish tank and you, and you, you can imagine the fish tank with like beautiful blue rocks and like a scuba Steve and like a tropical tree. It's bubbling oxygen in there. But if we put a blanket over it and we unplug the oxygen in the water and we leave it for three days and we take off the blanket, all the fish are dead. There's mold and viruses and actually sometimes bacteria growing in the tank. Nobody came by and coughed in that tank. Nobody came by and took a syringe and injected disease in there. Mm -hmm. It was a balanced ecosystem in which the light and the sound and the oxygen and the, the harmonious nature was in complete balance. Mm. And my body being 98% water and saline and have, it needs inputs of information to maintain my ecosystem was totally off. 
And so from my understanding, you know, that's what I started to look at. What was my time in nature like? Did I know how to deep dia- diaphragmatic breathe? Um, were the minerals that needed to balance the pH in my body in correct form based on my nutrition? Was I moving enough? Was I living in a state of joy and radical self-love? Or, or did I go into every single audition that I was trying to book and have self-doubt and shame and fear and hatred towards myself when I didn't do good. So I had to really look at what my life, what are all, what are all the pieces of information that are going into this supercomputer? And, you know, based on all that information, I started living my life dramatically different. Everything from every bite of food I ate to how I spent my time, who was in my inner circle, And of course, because I was so sick, I used different elements of technology to teach my body in a very short amount of time that I could feel radically different. Mm -hmm. And so I I say technology, I mean something like a hyperbaric chamber or red light therapy, or even uh, maybe in or in or out of the know of of the audience who hears this, pulsed electromagnetic field. So an electromagnetic wave, which stimulates the cell to breathe and dump garbage. Mm-hmm. Um, known known in the world for healing non-union bone fractures, mm-hmm. but essentially, uh, as a body, I have a magnetic field that that is either very robust or it's diminished when I start to get ill. Yeah. So I use all these tools not to replace the natural rhythm of how the body heals, but to show my body that in a really short amount of time, like months, that I could actually feel good. Mm -hmm. And then how do I remain or retain that balance naturally? And that's what I talk about on the the podcast that I do. Yes, the Beautifully Broken podcast. I I need to mention that. It'll be in the show notes as well. But, um, and there's no better way to put it. As you talk, like our similarities are are ridiculous. I fell ill, um, ended up with adhesions, sepsis, gangrene. Uh, when I was 19, I was in an opera program. I went to college quite early. Um, it crashed my whole career. I tried to go back in afterwards. No go. It was just, yeah. I, I know that space of um, having life dip in and say, thou shalt not go there. You have this instead. And you're young and you're like, I don't understand. Mm. Why aren't you cooperating with me? So I don't know. We have just so many overlaps. It's it's kind of ridiculous. That's Um, incredible. Yeah. (laughs) I can't wait to interview you. (laughs) We'll talk more about that later. This is about your journey. I guess both of our journeys. So you, so you're, you're 23, 25, 27. You're, you've just gone through a, a massive body. I hate to use breakdown, like shift. Like mm-hmm. Because everything that happens, I feel like, is is uh, there for a reason, teaching us something. Mm-hmm. And we get these things that are going to pivot us in different directions. And some of us get the health stuff, even though we don't like it mm. eventually. Um, eventually, I've learned that it's, it's been one of the top things that have happened to me in my life um, because it's taught me the most. Mm. So you you've discovered... You've discovered an equilibrium, it sounds like. You you refound that. And mm. you tested and tried a lot of things to get there. And I know that won't apply to everybody because but you've had almost everything, right? So <laughs> maybe it will apply yeah. to almost everybody. Um yeah. what did you what did you first kind of discover was, oh, this works. Oh, this is teaching my body, as you said, you know, showing it what it could be like or feel like. Yeah. I think uh, some of the most profound movers were uh, taking all every every bite of processed food that was not alive or living out of my diet. So it was just a non-starter for me. There was a day, yeah, you know, there was a day that I picked. I was like, I'm eating only vegetables and organic meats, and there will be no processed anything ever mm-hmm. again in my diet. Now I've loosened that a little bit today, but I'm pr- pretty much a 99 percenter. Yeah. You know, people would be like, oh, you're really obsessive about that. And I can tell you that uh, dramatically, dramatic reduction in pain. Mm. What was fascinating to me is that it didn't fix it. And I did have a doctor say, you know, I'm going to be real honest with you. 
um, you are at a point where just food alone is not going to fix you. And I remember being really angry. I was like, no, I should just be able to eat good and clean and adjust all the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But I was beyond that point. Mm -hmm. Um, And my body was presenting with maladies beyond that point. So uh, another thing that was really profound for me is I started to use uh, red light therapy. There was a specific panel or a a belly wrap that I put on my scar tissue. Mm -hmm. And really immediately, um, I started to have such a wild reduction in pain from the adhesions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm like, how is red light doing this? Red light is a, 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 it's just a spectrum of light that tends to have deeper penetration into the skin. But what the light does is it's actually charging your cell. It's releasing nitric oxide. It's helping circulation and it's helping mitochondria, which is the, the, the battery, the powerhouse of the cell, which makes all life possible. And, and we know this, we know it helps. Um, we, we will see, we always want to, we always want to reduce things in the, in the health world to down, like red light does this, but really Mm -hmm. it helps charge the cell. And as a result, people with severe eczema will have these eczema patches go away. Uh Um, men with male pattern baldness, which obviously it didn't work for me. Um, (laughs) this is not video, but I have no hair. (laughs) Um, I, but I, I tell you, it actually does. it, It did it did help grow hair back. So we get mm-hmm. all these weird things. People have inserts where they'll put um, uh, liners around their gums and they'll have red light therapy in their mouth and it helps to regenerate the receding tissue in the gums. Wow. You'd say, but well, how does red light treat all these things? It doesn't. The body has this wonderful mechanism of converting light to healing. <laughs> Find your light, right? right, right. So uh, this was another one, you know, the last one I'll just say is, is um, what was another really profound thing? Uh, I want to give a simple one. Not so, not so. Oh, you know, um, a castor oil pack on the liver. You know, castor oil is an oil, which you should not eat, but you can rub on the skin, the dermis. Mm-hmm. And if you apply heat with the castor oil, um, the vibration of the heat helps the oil penetrate deep down into the liver mm-hmm. or, or the intestine. And it really, um, it supports the liver's ability to convert environmental toxicants and break them down where then they can move out of the body. Um, the <laughs> liver being a, a secondary amunctory. Hold and on. It's just, Hold yeah. on. You're making me have flashbacks. I probably spent two years with a castor oil pack across my abdomen with saran wrap on top and a heating yeah, pad. Oh, yes, I did. And when you were saying red light therapy does the same thing, I was like, oh, praise Jesus. You know, I'd rather have done the red light. The castor oil is, oh, <laughs> but you're right. It works. It did. It worked. Okay. Keep going. That was just. It works. No, it, it works. <laughs> it's fabulous. And I, and I know, you know, it's such a, a polarizing little world we live in. So I, I always, I know sometimes people are like, oh, that's, that's woo woo. And it's, it's no. really, you know, it, there's so much um, profound evidentiary proof around these are 5,000 year old mechanisms. You know, there's a, there's a great example. Actually, I lost a friend in the pandemic because I was really in ice baths. I would sit in ice for three minutes and some guy was like, this is irresponsible. There's a, there's a pandemic. And I was like, well, actually, um, cold therapy is a hormetic stressor, which rebounds the immune system, um, in a profound way. Mm -hmm. And if we go all the way back for hundreds and hundreds of years ago, especially in, um, uh, little Danish towns, they would set their babies outside in the snow to develop a robust immune system and get them all dirty and all the things. So, um, there's most of the things I'm talking about They're they're based on Hippocrates views on medicine. Mm -hmm. It's based on, it's like, I live in a 72 degree box controlled temperature differential, which does not help my thyroid to regulate body temp. So sometimes it's just getting the body back in alignment with these rhythms that people knew 5,000 years ago. It's really, it's, we've, we, we, we think we've invented it. (laughs) And then we've just been like, all I'm doing is I'm harnessing, you know, the predominant spectrums of red light, which happen from sunrise to about uh, 8.30, 8.45 in the morning, which we now know if we stand outside in those sunlight rays, we get this predominant spectrum of red light, which helps to reset the circadian rhythm and benefit sleep. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of recycling old stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the magnetics, I got one more that's, that's really fun okay. that, um, you know, people, people talk about, you know, PEMF, pulsed electromagnetic field, which is essentially running a current through a copper coil. Mm-hmm. 
there's a magnetic field that comes off. And just mm-hmm. so if anybody hears this, you are a magnetic coil as a, as a body, you create a torus field, mm-hmm. which goes up and around strongest from the heart. The heart is the strongest magnetic um, field. And we can measure this. I think it's a magnetic encephalograph, mm-hmm. but it, people used to dig holes in the dirt and they would put bodies in the ground to be closer to the core of the earth, intuitively knowing that when we ground, um, there is a pulsed electromagnetic wave from the oscillating core of the planet, the molten core and layers of iron spinning mm-hmm. around. And the closer you are to that field, the quicker your body's going to heal because the cell is breathing, dumping more garbage, mm-hmm. and um, making better energy. Mm-hmm. So there's always a nature equivalent for all this stuff that I, I reference. Do you remember um, magnetic beds with all the little copper... Oh yeah, I had one of those. I do. Too. Uh-huh. I do <laughs> All these yeah. things you're saying, I'm like, I remember that. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. so there. Uh, okay, so I know that when I was going through my illnesses, um, getting the um, the Western world and the alternative world to um, tolerate one another. I'll use tolerate because that's as far as I could get them to go. Yeah, was difficult, and I decided to pursue both modalities. Um, how, how, how do you feel like when, you know, it sounds like you've been on a journey of just collecting all kinds of resources for just about everything that come from the alternative modalities. How do you reconcile or, or work with somebody or like somebody comes and presents something to you? How do you know, like what to say to them, like what Mm. their path should be? Should Mm -hmm. it be all Western? Should it be Eastern? Should it be alternative? Should it be a mix? I know this is highly individual, but I think when a lot of us are presented with an illness, our first thought is, I am so incredibly lost. I have never, I had never thought I was going to get this. I don't even know what to do next. And I remember Mm -hmm. being in that doe-eyed blindness for a while. So to have somebody step in and say, oh, here's how you do it. Like, can, what can you say to that? I know that's a really big question. Oh, no, it's a great question. (laughs) It's a great question. And the, the things we share as human beings across um, all states, all races, all, all the things, right? The things that we share are uh, the, the body needs to be flooded with minerals. We need to flood the body with oxygen. We need to support the lymphatic system. We need to support the off-gassing of the nervous system. We need to support the energetic body. Mm-hmm. You know, really, and, and, and we need to have a connection with something bigger than ourselves. So we can probably all like make a list and be like from zero to 10, where are you at each of these boxes? I might've left out a box, but Mm -hmm. there, there are like five or six things that I I love to reference for people. And it is an individual case by case basis, but based on what your symptoms are. So it's all about the symptoms are the divine whispers from the body with an opportunity to go deeper and heal. Yeah. We have a lot of symptom suppression. So that's my first question. I'm like, is what you're doing right now, is it palliative care? Which is good. You have to meet a person where they're at and assist. You can't, you can't heal in pain. Yeah. You know, there's no mechanism to deal with pain in the body other than to change something. Mm-hmm. So how are you looking at that voice, that symptom, that, that, that divine whisper from your body? And what are you going to do with it? It's fine to palliate, but eventually, eventually we got to move through to the body is probably stuck somewhere. Whatever you're experiencing, if you're this podcast, you're stuck somewhere because your body is making repeated attempts to rebalance at a level of homeostasis and it keeps failing. It's like a fly hitting the window and it keeps bumping off and it keeps doing that. And that's the loop. So how do we correct the loop? And so we got we to gotta look at the body like that fish tank. What are the elements I can flood my body with in order to remain re- remain in a state that is a, a normal balance or or a peak performance balance, mm-hmm. and that's where precision medicine or individualized medicine, biological medicine, you know, is really looking at that five thousand year old um, study of what what makes the body well. A lot of times, it's it's going without. Mm-hmm. It's what are you going to remove from your life, not what I'm going to add, not what <laughs> supplements I'm going to add. Process sugar, blue light, <laughs> blue light at bedtime. I mean, just basic mm-hmm. stuff, but more than that. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. we could go on. You know, yeah. the I think one of the most, um, you know, I, I look, I, I love watching people. That's a theater trait that I got. 
because I was a I was a pretty good actor, you know, great singer, and um, even from a little little kid, my my parents would be like, "Man, you really like to observe and listen, and you're such a good listener." And that's all performing is. You're listening and you're waiting to pass the potato. So on stage in a Broadway show, your target for what you want is always changing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's the way life is. It's just like a tennis game. The target is always moving. And so sometimes people will reflect back to me when I'll say, uh, you know, I'm talking about uh, a bowel health or a castor oil, or I'm talking about, um, you know, the, the different elements of, of the restoring the microbiome and people will be like, oh, health is such a moving target. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And we live in a world, we live in a world where uh, there is this story that more is better. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the parable of, of, of the man who just goes out and fishes for his family. And they're like, oh, you should, you should hire somebody, you know, so you can get a couple of people and then you can sell those fish in the market. And this guy's like, why would I do that? He's like, oh, so you can make more money. They're like, okay. Well, you actually, what you should do is you incorporate and you get everybody fishing for you. Then you can export to a different country. <laughs> You'll quadruple. But why would I do that? The net is, is that at the end of the day, you want all these more things just so you can have more time with your family mm-hmm. or whatever that simple version of your ecosystem is that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But because of, I think, I think unconscious capitalism drives a lot of illness in the United States. Yeah. I think we look around and we think, we think there's a story created in what we want. And a lot of times, uh, just from my experience, there's no joy at the end of that ladder. Joy, for me, it's like getting up and being able to poop, have a cup of coffee, walk outside, and be, uh, oh, my God, look, I get to contribute to the wellness of the world. Yeah. That's it. I, I see um, many of us looking at our bodies as things that we use to get where we want to go. Mm. And and I've heard the analogy of, well, you have to take care of your car. You've got to change the oil. You have to do this and that. But if your body is just a thing that you use, uh, that's when you said the, you know, the kind of capitalistic response, right? That's, that's exactly where I go to. Oh, your body mm. breaks, go get this thing, put the bandaid on it, you know, tape the tailpipe back up again, whatever, you know, just to get to point A to point B, it is certainly not the, the top of your list. So yeah. th- that for me is a, is a shift I'm still continuing to make because I still get externally focused on all the other things in my life. And then I always have to remember, I'm not just using these cells, right? I'm, 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 I'm prostrate with prostrate with gratitude to them is how I have to remind myself to be. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have such a powerful mission, Mm -hmm. it's like, how do you short the mission? You're like, okay, wait, I got to get, I, there's some, I I can kind of timeline out the longevity that I'm going to need to achieve this. Yeah. I was like, why am I going to throw away the only, the only vessel that matters? Mm -hmm. But we, we overextend ourselves. I'll just use the example of a car. Yeah. The cars people pay money on. I mean, like, you know, that could easily afford like a good home that they sit in your driveway 98% of your life. They only get you to where you want to be from point A to point B. And then they're just sitting there. Yeah. It's a terrible use of money. (laughs) <laughs> there's a there's yeah. a guy i used to follow that was called mr money mustache that was based on the monopoly guy and he said never buy never buy a car never drive a car more than ten thousand dollars you can get an amazing car for ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars i promise you that that won't break down it'll get you where you want to go yeah um but you start adding up those examples and you're like oh my god i've got i've got money i could have like i could have a whole wellness center in my house if i really reprioritize my spending yeah, yeah. um but we leverage ourselves. We leverage ourselves against that story. Mm-hmm. On I think on this is just my theory on what our perception of joy is, and so we back ourselves into these lives where you almost don't have a choice. Yeah, because it's against a mortgage and student loans. Mm-hmm. And I could you know you go on, but mm-hmm. um, man, it's 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 such an ecosystem healing. Yeah, it's yeah. all related. Yeah, I mean, just pressing that point. Um, the I don't have time for it, the I don't have money for it, or even the I don't have the emotional capacity to try to integrate these other ideas and and ways of healing. I just want to go to the doctor and have them fix me. 
you know, it's a very, what am I getting at here? You have to have a, a real deep desire and an ability to sort of resist a lot of the outside world's um, demands or shoulds mm. uh, in order, I think, to really explore what true deep healing is and can be because we're just mm-hmm. not set up for it as a society. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I know. Not I'm, 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 I'm not going to go down that path because you could really get me rolling on that one. Um, we're, we're working on it one huh. podcast at a time. Gosh, yeah, no kidding. Uh, last question before we wrap up here. You, you mm-hmm. mentioned biohacking um, to me you know, before this. Yeah. I, I love the term biohacking because my, my nerd brain just lights up, you know, stars all over. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's sort of like everything you've been talking about, but. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'll say that, you know, I got, first of all, I got so much great information um, yeah. when I was so lost from mm-hmm. podcasts. Mm-hmm. So that's why I do a, I do a podcast just cause I was like, man, I want to, I think I've got enough information in my head that I sort of want to give back. So that yeah. was like five years ago. And it was, it was the conversation in which I heard the information differently. You know, I heard it in context, not on a marketing ad, not on a box, but I heard it between passing between two, two people. And it was so profound for me. Um, biohacking really is uh, a term coined by Dave Asprey, who is um, the Bulletproof Coffee guy and um, the Upgrade Conference, you know, using technology to upgrade your biology. He was a computer a computer hacker and worked on the original um, incarnation of the cloud, cloud software. So um, the term is essentially coined by him and it's, and it really is. Now I have to say, do I believe today that we ever hack our health? I don't. I think we, I think, uh, I think the technology is fun. I think it amplifies things. I think it reminds you of how you good you can feel. But at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to be plugged into a bunch of machines just like you don't want to be on a bunch of pills. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can use these things to amplify our experience. We can use things like red light therapy and hyperbarics and magnetic coils to take us out of pain Mm -hmm. without destroying your gut wall, without creating an opioid addiction. I mean, listen, it is so much the lesser of two evils (laughs) Um, because a lot of the stuff really, really does work. Um, and I, I also think I think it I think uh, I think it deserves a, a new word. I think it it's going to evolve. Is it, you know, is it? Yeah, it it really is. It's it's a lot of the stuff we're just we're re-engineering our alignment with nature, but we're using technology because we've designed these little lives that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the stuff that we produce, I mean, look at the content you produce and, and all the, the projects you're involved in. It's just, it's really not within the human design. I would argue that we're meant to eat, sleep, play, make love. Did I say sleep? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and move and move heavy things. And yeah. other than that, like all the, all this stuff, the busy brain, the busy body, mm-hmm. um, the exploration of what it means to be human you know, it, it, that's where it where it gets a, a little complicated. So you could argue um, what we're really designed for. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, to live the lives that we're plugged into today, I'm a huge fan of using some of these things to not only optimize performance, but to mitigate um, the severity of, of symptoms, to mm-hmm. learn better about the body. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's fascinating that, that we are these electrical beings. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are an electrical body that governs the, the chemical body. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'll be really interested to see as this stuff evolves and it does, it is becoming, yeah. you know, it already is mainstream. I always say, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. or let me say this. I always say, I just started saying this. I mm-hmm. said the future is here. Mm-hmm. It's just not evenly distributed. Yes. That's <laughs> so beautiful. these things are here now, today, you name it, regenerate a joint, you know, mm-hmm. gene therapy, all these wild things are coming. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's just not evenly distributed. So mm-hmm. I think with conversation with the adoption, um, price drops, we we get affordability for for more people across different spectrums. And uh, some of the stuff, it's just undeniable. Yeah. I mean, you know, talk about let me just you know want a basic a basic biohack <laughs> is is lifting weight. <laughs> you know, 
that, that when my yeah. when I went through uh, um, chemotherapy, I there was something in me that I was like, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym with like track needle marks in my arm. I look like ET. I'm all mm. burnt out and white. My doctor's like, don't go to the gym. Don't <laughs> touch a weight. Don't be in that dirty Jeremy. Pl-. I was like, no. Uh-huh. I'm like having a rocky moment. I'm gonna be in there. I'm gonna be pushing weight, but uh, the 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 stats around the reoccurrence of breast cancer uh, mm-hmm. when women exercise is it's uh, it's above seventy percent. Mm-hmm. You know the, the metabolic activity. Uh, we'll go back to the mitochondria. Your dense mitochondrial tissue is your insurance policy mm-hmm. of having a worse time with cancer. Mm -hmm. And so everybody should be lifting heavy things. Mm -hmm. And now we have all this technology to make it safe. You know, we have all these great machines like adaptive resistance exercise, ARX, Mm -hmm. you know, I could go on, there's tons of them, Mm -hmm. but that is a basic one where we got to pick up stuff and grunt just for a little bit in a safe way. You don't want to get hurt. Um, But the body responds quite favorably. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, there's a million takeaways uh, from today. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to go back to that question 20 minutes ago. The person who is looking at their body and saying, oh my God, why why did you do this? Let's just say that that's the manifestation of whatever is not in harmony, right? The, Mm -hmm. the, The fish tank went bad. That person I'm hoping listening right now is opening up and thinking, what are the other pieces that I feel drawn to? What can I research? What can I look for myself as opposed to just relying on what's being, you know, presented to me or shoved in my face that they'll explore a bit and, and seek and, and find. And your podcast is a great way to do that, by the way, the beautifully broken podcast um, to pick up a lot of that. Cause again, I know you can't tell everybody right now what they should be doing for all of our individual little, you know, breakages. Um, but would you agree that's, that's the mindset at least to go into and sustain? Yeah, I, I'd say that, um, I, I just, as you said that I remember sitting in my, I remember sitting in the emergency room and I'm about to go in for my first surgery. And I, I remember very teary. I just, I was like, what did I do to get this? Yeah. What did I do to get this? Yeah. And my doctor was like, you did nothing. Mm-hmm. You did nothing. And I remember I was like, sort of pissed at that answer, <laughs> you know? And, and I did uh, my, my accepting that every, every choice I've made in my life, whether conscious or unconscious played into me having cancer, Mm -hmm. gave me agency to change everything. So it was, it was incredibly empowering for me to look at, um, what was being called in for my growth, for my opportunity. It's a very short little life. So if, if I think you can look at it either way, but the other way, the alternative, and I never know. But the other alternative is a very angry universe in which we are thrust um, unfavorable experiences upon us. And and I'm choosing, I'm choosing not to live that way. Yeah. And that's just my choice. I don't think there's a right or wrong, but um, I'm having a lot of fun doing it this way. I 100% agree. I always say, if my body knows how to manifest something, it knows how to unmanifest it. Mm. It's already been in a healthy state. It can, it remembers that it, it will know what to go back to. So I remind mm-hmm. myself of that all the time when I feel like, oh, this will never end or what can I do or it's not working. Like my body basically remembers, I just have to find the right triggers to get that going, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever that may be. Yep. That's it. Whew. All right, Freddie. Fabulous. Thank you. I'm, I'm hoping people are feeling really inspired right now and like wanting to, I know everybody's Googling red light therapy and <laughs> like, what is that? Just get on, put on the Rocky soundtrack, <laughs> go outside for a walk. Mm-hmm. You've got all the power in the world with inside you. Yeah, and That's, hope- you just got to clear away the noise. And hopefully they're going to visit you also beautifully broken dot world. That's your website. So thank you so much for today. Such a blessing to meet you. Thank you. You too. I'm excited to get you on mine. So what did you all think of that conversation? I don't often dip into the realm of physical bodily healing, but I found this conversation to be an excellent reminder of the role our physical selves play, what our physical selves need, 
why we love them up or ignore them or deny them. Our physical bodies are the basis for everything we do and experience. And talking with Freddie was a really wonderful reminder of what he calls the homeostasis, the balance, that our bodies are always naturally, intrinsically trying to reach within us. So so just a caveat here, I actually had the pleasure of also interviewing or being interviewed rather by Freddie. So he interviewed me, I interviewed him, I'm on his podcast, which of course, please check it out, The Beautifully Broken. And it's like an extension of this conversation, but he asked some very personal questions about uh, points in my life that could have, should have, and did in fact break me. And what happens when you come back together physically as well as emotionally. So... Between the two episodes, I think, I don't know, there's just an extension of healing. As you, as you know, from me, from years now, healing is always happening on every level. It must happen on every level. And sometimes we focus just on the body, sometimes just on the heart, but it's always happening on every level. And every level of us has that ability to seek the water level, right? To seek homeostasis, to seek and reach equilibrium, balance. Keep this in mind as you are perhaps in your health journey, or hopefully maybe you're not in a health journey. You're like, I am fit as a fiddle, but maybe somebody you love is in their journey. Keep this in mind. I hope it was inspirational. I hope you can see how many of us who've been through things really triumph. And we don't triumph because we're lucky. We triumph because we give our hearts to it. We give our beings to our healing. We don't have healing happen to us. We happen to the healing. We happen with the healing. And that is a real game changer. All right, my darlings, my love to you all. Thank you for hanging out with me for another hopefully inspirational and interesting episode of Flow Dreaming. Still kind of woo-woo. And I'll see you next time. Hey, friends. I just want to point you in the direction of a couple of resources that might just light up your day. First, I have an app. It's called Flow Dreaming for Meditation and Manifesting. And it has hundreds of flow dreams and playlists that you can use, download, enjoy to start sculpting these energies of your life. Now, second, there is a YouTube channel for flow dreaming. I know, who'd have guessed? The best thing you can find on that channel, aside from also this podcast, is a tutorial. It teaches you how to flow dream. I'm right there on the screen with you, leading you through several beautiful and gorgeous flow dreams that we do together. So go check it out. Look up Flow Dreaming on YouTube and have a good time. Enjoy yourself with these beautiful free resources. And if you feel the urge, reach out to me. I am always available, summer at flowdreaming.com, and I'll help you. And together, we'll discover what may be a perfect person personalized flow dreaming program for you could be like. To find out how to do that, just go visit my website, flowdreaming.com. Until next time, love to you all.